Hey Toysters, so for today's video, let's talk about who I think is going to lead each NHL team in goal scoring. I already have a video on who I think will lead the team in points, but here we're focusing on the real good stuff, and that is goals. Anyway, I did this video last year, and so I thought it'd be fun to kind of revisit my predictions, and uh, hopefully I have at least a hot take or two here, and of course I want to know your thoughts about this in the comments. Do you have any hot takes for who you think is going to lead your favorite team in goals this upcoming season. We're going to start with who I think is the easiest of predictions, and then we'll work our way to the more difficult ones. And I'll finish things off with the player who I think will lead uh, his team in goals and points. So looking at some of the players I talked about in our previous video. So yeah, let me know your hot takes in the comments and do uh, drop any suggestions you have for more videos like this before we get into the NHL season. And then that way, I'll help you, I'll help you pass away the time during the off season. Let's dive into this. We'll start with the Montreal Canadiens. And I'm hoping and praying for a full 82 games or close enough for Cole Caulfield. He had 26 goals in 46 games last year. That's quite a good clip. And he was my prediction last year. He tied for the team lead in goals, even though he only played 46 games. So I think that there's a good chance with him and Suzuki out there, he could be a 35 goal scorer. And some of you say that he might even be beyond that. I think that's totally fair. All right, LA Kings. I personally think this one's pretty easy as well, although I'll shout out Brandon here said Pierre-Luc Dubois would lead the Kings in points. I was impressed to see that because the Kings are going to have a fair amount of firepower on their first three lines. Uh, but Pierre-Luc Dubois, he has scored at a 30-goal clip before. He's been up around 27-28. Again, prorate that to an 82-game season. But, I mean, Adrian Kempe just had 41. He was my pick last year. I'm going to stick with him this year. He's in the heart of his prime. So Adrian Kempe once again for the Kings. All right, Seattle Kraken. Last year, I picked Jared McCann. Again, here's a case of a player who had more than I expected of him this past season. And I'll, there's no reason why I would pick against him this year. He had 40. The next leader on the team was Beniers with 24. Now, Beniers, I'd like to see him get to 30. But um, yeah, it's going to be hard to pick against McCann for this upcoming season. Oh boy, <laughs> I put a laughing emoji uh, for the next one. So for the Red Wings last year, I said, all right, give me a full season of Jakob Vrana. He'll lead the team in goals. He's he's scored at a pretty good clip before, and he only played 25 games. So he's not even on the team anymore. Dylan Larkin had 32, but I do like the arrival of a Michigan native to potentially pair with him on that top line, and that's Alex Dabrinkit. The 25-year-old has averaged 35 goals per 82 games, and who knows, he could even get back to that 40 goal mark, as good of a season as Larkin probably will have this upcoming year, and I do expect a bounce back from Lucas Raymond. All right, next up, we've got the Avalanche. So last year, I said it would be Nathan McKinnon. He had a fantastic year, led the team in points, uh, but Mika Rontanen had 55 goals. Now, is Nathan McKinnon going to be a 50 goal scorer with the Avalanche in a full 82 game season? That's possible, but again, it's really hard to pick against Miko for goals. I've picked Nathan McKinnon for points again. All right, and speaking of points, we've got Braden Point for the Tampa Bay Lightning. He was my pick last year. And again, how do you pick against him when he had 51 last year? I wouldn't expect him to get quite that many this upcoming season. I don't know. That was that was a really high bar for him to set. But even if he's at 44 or 45, the only player I really see I see coming close to him for this upcoming year would be Stamkos. He could easily hit 40 again. And Kucherov is a fantastic point producer. But it's between Point and Stamkos, and I'll stick with Braden Point there. St. Louis Blues. My pick last year was actually not that bad. It was I picked Pavel Buchnevich. Now, Buch had 26 in 63 games, so that's easily over a 30-goal year for him in a full season. But Jordan Cairo was Jordan Cairo last year. He had 37. That's how many he had the previous season, I want to say. So I think I'll pick Jordan Cairo, although I've got Robert Thomas for points this upcoming season. All right, Pittsburgh Penguins. Last year, I said Jake Ensel, and I was correct. He had 36, but as I've learned today, thank God I didn't record this video earlier this morning, uh, Gensel is going to miss the start of the season. That's going to be at least a month. And so with how many other point producers you have on this team, I think you can make the case for a couple of them. Easily, you can make the case for Sid. But let's maybe talk about somebody who could slide into that top line to play with Sid. And so I'll pick uh, Ricard Raquel. He's had a really good career resurgence in Pittsburgh Still easily in his prime. He's been a 30-goal scorer, I think, two times in the NHL. So I'm going to take Raquel here. Although, of course, I've got Sid to lead the team in points. And Jets fan, even in our previous video, said Crosby's got a 105-point season 
in the making, and he could, uh, I believe, if I'm making, if I'm correct here, he would tie Gretzky for the record for consecutive seasons with a point per game at 19. That's incredible, considering the difference in the eras that these two two players played in. So anyway, I'm going with the Swede Raquel. All right, my team, the San Jose Sharks, even though I'm wearing this Ducks jersey here of captain or former captain Ryan Getzlaff. All right, so last year I said Timo Meyer, and I was actually correct, even though he was traded out to the Devils. He had 31 goals, and that led the team by a few. Eric Carlson was next in line. Or no, excuse me. Logan Couture had 27. Carlson had 25. Um, I'm going to say somebody who really does need to light a fire under his ass, to be frank, and that's Tomas Hurdle. He's been a 35-goal scorer before. I know the Sharks don't have the most elite of wingers, but we could see William Eklund in the top six this next coming season. And don't forget, they got Anthony Duclair, a former 30-goal scorer, uh, at the trade deadline for, or not the trade deadline, early in the offseason for quite a great deal. So who knows? Maybe Duclair could even be in that mix. But I'm going to go with Ninja Hurdle for the Sharks. For the Vancouver Canucks last year, I said Bo Horvat, and he played 49 games for them last year, and then he got traded to the Islanders. He had 31 goals. I mean, he probably would have had the team lead for the full 82-game season. But, of course, you had that beautiful chemistry between Elias Pettersson and Andre Kuzmenko. Now, I think Petey is probably the more logical pick here. He's a little bit more proven in the NHL. But the way I see this, though, is that with the season that Petey had, I think defenses are going to be more prioritizing shutting him down. So that might free up Kuzmenko even more so he could actually have that 40-goal season. So I'll go with Andre Kuzmenko, but I've got Pettersson for points. All right, Chicago Blackhawks. Last year, I thought that Lucas Reichel was going to make the team and actually stay on the roster for a majority of the season. That wasn't the case, and hopefully that changes this upcoming year. He is one of their better prospects in their system. Andreas Athanasiu and Taylor Radish had 20 goals apiece, and so I'm going to pick Taylor Radish for this upcoming year. Although Bedard, I do have him leading the team in points, even though his shot is fantastic. Now we get to the Anaheim Ducks, and I was correct last year. I said it would be Troy Terry. 23 goals, I think he does have that potential to get to the 30-goal plateau, but there are a couple other players who I would expect to contend for that as well. Don't forget, they just got Alex Kalorn in free agency from the Lightning, but I'm going to go with Mason McTavish, who I think will be the future captain of this club. He has proven before that he can be a shoot-first player, and so I think that he'll break out close to 30, uh, which would be a good uptick from where he was last season at 17. Now to the Hurricanes. Last year, I said Andrei Svechnikov. And he had 23 goals in just 64 games. So injuries did set him back a little bit. And even so, I thought that the 23 mark was a bit disappointing for him. I think that he could be at least a 35-goal scorer. So I'm going to stick with Svech here, even though Ajo was the team leader with 36 last year. And I did, I did predict him to be the leader in points this upcoming season. And let's not uh, put disrespect on Martin Natchez. He had 28 last year. Columbus Blue Jackets, you've got a number of players you could choose from as well. I picked Patrick Laine last year, but he had 13 fewer games played than the leader, Boone Jenner, who had 26. Line A only had 22. We'll see what happens if he ends up playing center for this team. But, I mean, the guy who had the hot hand for them for a lot of last year was Kirill Marchenko with 21 goals in 59 games. So I'm going to pick Marchenko, although, who knows, you could even pick Johnny Gaudreau. You could even pick Ken Johnson for this as well. Now we get to the Devils, and last year I picked Jack Hughes, and he had 43 goals to lead the team. Does he have 50 in his future? He's one hell of a player. I won't deny that. But you can't overlook all the other weapons that the Devils have. Look at, of course, Jesper Bratt and his progression. Look at Nico Heischer. They bring in Tyler Toffoli, who had 34 with the Calgary Flames last year. Dawson Mercer broke out for 27 this past season. And then we get to my favorite here, Timo Meyer, who was a 40-goal producer and really did drive a lot of offense for them when he came over in that trade and in, in the playoffs as well. So... I think it's going to be Timo time quite frequently there in New Jersey, so I'm going to pick my guy Meyer. All right, Golden Knights. Last year, I picked Marcia so, and he did lead the team technically with 28, although Jack Eichel scored at a higher clip, just fewer games played. And Marcia so is playing for a contract because he's on the last year of his deal. Eichel could, of course, go off with how he played in the playoffs, but I'm going to scrap all that. I'm going to pick Mark Stone. Give me a full 82 games of Mark Stone and all of his sellies out there. He's scored 30 before. And even though he's had kind of an injury-plagued career, he scored at that clip in many of his seasons as a professional. So I'm going to go with Stone here. He looked awesome in the playoffs as well. And then we're going to finish things off with the players who I said would lead their team in points in addition to goals. So I'll go through these a little bit more quickly. Austin Matthews, I think he's got at least 50 goals 
in a very important contract season for him. And Abhishek said that he could even challenge McDavid for the scoring lead this upcoming year. I wouldn't go as far personally. I think that Matthews, I'd be hard pressed to see him over like 125 points, but he's got a lot to prove this upcoming season. And, the, and so do the Maple Leafs. So you never know. Now we look at the Boston Bruins and I mean, it's David Pasternak, 61 this past season. I don't know if there's going to be anybody who flirts with 40 or 45, so it's him. Washington Capitals, you, you can't go against Ovechkin. By the way, man, what about that, that contract for Tom Wilson? Seven years at $6.5 million for a guy who's already in his 30s? That's, that's unreasonably steep in my opinion. But anyway, Ovechkin, the great eight, can't put any dis disrespect on his name. Winnipeg Jets, now th this one, I picked Kyle Connor last year, and it was Mark Shifley. 42 goals. Connor's shot percentage dropped off last year, so I'm going to say he bounces back in that respect and leads the team in points as well. Not to say Shifley couldn't be a 35-goal scorer. It is a contract season for him as well, but there is a possibility he could get traded out as well. So I'm going to stick with Kyle Connor. All right, Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, I was incorrect last year. I said it'd be Sean Couturier, but of course he missed the whole season. I didn't know that at the time. Travis Konechny had 31 goals in 60 games. And even though Owen Tippett, who was in my breakouts video the previous year, uh, he had 27 this past year. Well, Konechny scored easily at the highest pace. He's in the prime of his career. And barring a trade, he would definitely be my pick to lead the team in scoring for goals. Buffalo Sabres. Hey, my pick last year was Victor Olofsson, and you might say, geez, how'd you end up with that? Well, I mean, look at the guy. He had 28 goals last year. That's pretty damn good for a team that doesn't make the playoffs. But of course, he finished just fifth on the team in scoring, and it was Tage Thompson leading the way, and really just the straw that stirs the drink for that top line with players like Alex Tuck and also Jeff Skinner. Everybody there had at least 35 goals. Tage had 47. It's hard not to pick him this season. Big shout out to another player I talked about in my breakouts projections last year. Dylan Cousins, the, the workhorse from Whitehorse. Dylan Cousins had 31 this past year. I didn't expect that whatsoever. But I don't think he's going to quite get to where Tage Thompson could be. Again, heart of his prime. So let's go with Tage. Arizona Coyotes, a couple of those studs aren't at that level just yet. We're talking about guys like Dylan Gunther, Logan Cooley. Uh, Michelli had a great season last year as a rookie. But it's got to be Keller. 37 goals last year, by far the most on the team. Schmaltz can still put the puck in the net a little bit as well. Minnesota Wild, love the season that Boldy had last year. 31 goals. He was one of my breakout wingers last season. But Kaprizov had 40 in 67 games. So I think he's at least a 40-goal scorer this upcoming season. Nashville Predators, you could maybe make the case for somebody coming in like Thomas Novak, who had a good season, 17 goals in 51 games. For, uh, Philip Forsberg for me, though, he did have a down year last year. And of course, injuries did set him back. And he's a former 40-goal scorer, so I think he gets back to that point. Hopefully, he has some good chemistry there with Ryan O'Reilly. I picked him to lead the team in goals last year, but it was Matt Duchesne with just 22. All right, New York Rangers. Last year, I picked Chris Kreider. He had 36 goals, but Mika Zibanejad has been wonderful for the Rangers. 20 power play goals for him this last year, 39 on the season. So I'm going to stick with Mika. He averages 15 goals on the man advantage over the last four seasons. Edmonton Oilers. Uh, I picked Dreisaitl last year. I mean, he had 52. That's nothing to scoff at. But is that kind of his plateau? 52, maybe 55 goals? I mean, that's, again, you can't go wrong with that. But McDavid just had 64. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. Heart of his prime. He's at least going to be probably at 56, 57. I'll stick with McJesus for this one. Last year for the Panthers, I predicted Matthew Kachuk. Amazing season. Hart Trophy finalist. 40 goals. But... Two more goals came off the stick of Carter Verhege, Mr. Clutch. I'll go with Kachuk here, though. I just love the wave that he's riding, and I think that he can catalyze a little bit more of that offense himself. All right, Calgary Flames. Uh, this one was a disaster for me last year. I said Andrew Majapani. He had a 35-goal year the previous season, but you cut that in half. He only had 17 this past year to fully lead the team with 34. I know Elias Lindholm's 40-goal season kind of looks like an outlier, but I think he can get to that 30-goal mark this upcoming season, and that might be enough to lead the Calgary Flames this year. Who knows, maybe somebody like Jacob Peltier becomes the goal-scoring leader after that. You still have other players out there like Nazib Kadri. He's a former 30-goal scorer. Jonathan Huberto could bounce back, but he's not as much of a shoot-first player, obviously. Uh, Dallas Stars, I predicted Rope Hints, and he went off. He had 37 goals in not even a full season. 
But Jason Robertson, it's it's too good to pick against him right now. I know that Hintz led the team and the NHL in playoff scoring this past year. But Robertson, 46 goals. The guy's not even in the prime of his career. So I'll go with him here. Uh, Jamie Benton, shout out, had 33 tallies of his own. New York Islanders, I picked Brock Nelson last year and he finished with 36. That's wonderful. But because I picked Bo Horvat to finish as the points leader for the Islanders, you got to think that a lot of goals are going to have to go in the net for him. So Nelson, I still think is a 30 goal scorer, but Horvat, you know, he's going to be around 35 for them this upcoming year, I would think. And then lastly, we've got the Ottawa Senators. Last year, I picked Josh Norris before he got injured. He only played eight games last year. Two seasons ago, though, he had 35 goals in 66 games. And then Claude Giroux had 35 goals. And you also had Tim Stutzla. Huge season, 38 goals. Brady Kachuk, though, he's my points leader this upcoming season. He had 35 goals this upcoming year. And as I said in my previous video, I do like his progression over the past few seasons. So I think he's going to hit 40 this upcoming year. All right, now this is normally where I end the video with saying, oh, did you enjoy the video? Leave a like. Let me know if you have suggestions for other videos. But I wanted to make sure that I tie in a little bit of my bestest best friend here, Cortana, because yesterday it marked nine years since I took her home, adopted her, and um, she's just a bundle of joy every single day. And we have so many fun adventures together. So anyway, uh, just a big shout out to my bestest best friend in the world. And who knows, maybe I'll put in a little bit more Cortana in my video. So if you made it to the end of this video, drop a little dog emoji in your comment as well. And I'll give you a like. It'll be our fun little secret for the others who dropped off already. By the way, overall, I finished 15 of 32 with these predictions last year. But for centers, I did a little bit better. How, how well did I did? Well, how well did I do, I guess? Make sure you watch my points leader predictions video for this year. See the pinned comment down below. I'll put a link to that right there for you. All right, guys. Hey, I appreciate you, Twisters, so much for watching. Hopefully, we can get through this offseason with more videos like this together. And uh, I'll catch you later. All right. Ciao.